you were saying that sometimes when when he was your manager, which yeah. he was for me for a number of years when he was at the uh, the PAC, uh, and I would go to meetings with him, which was fine, and he had, uh, he, he conducted the meetings. But as I said, he he was not an aggressive manager type person. He kind of subtly said made suggestions, and I remember on. A, a, two occasions in particular where there was an issue that I needed uh, I needed uh, sort of senior support for because I was going to take this approach which I hoped was right but I, I didn't want it to backfire on me <laughs> and I took it to Hugh this is one-on-one -on -one. and we spent maybe 20 minutes discussing this uh, and one, one particular time, and I walked out and I got halfway down the hall and I said, I didn't get an answer out of you. I got some observations and maybe a subtle suggestion, but it didn't say, like other people would say, Mike Swift or Jay Atherton or Will Smith himself yeah. would say, yes, that's a good idea, do that. But Hugh didn't work that way. And he, he, uh, he always said that when, when, when somebody would say, oh, I, I don't know he, uh, if I can do that, I'm so busy. And he would say, busy? What are you busy doing? This is fundamental. What, what, you're busy doing administrative stuff when actually this is the issue. And on those occasions, he could be very definitive. And he, and, uh, there were certain phrases that that uh, he didn't like, like when you said, I'm, I'm too, you were too busy to do that. He said, well, if you're busy, you should be busy at this, not that. <laughs> and, uh, but we realized that what, a, what an influence he was having in a sort of a subtle way. And, uh, and he, would, he, would look at, he would look at archivist work very, very uh, carefully, although he didn't make a big deal of it. You didn't know that. Archivists prepared appraisal reports, um, and he would look at those and make his minor suggestions and his little pencil on the margin. And Unlike Jean-Pierre Wallow, who used to draw the pen across the page and say no, <laughs> and things like that, he didn't operate that way. But we knew that we were in the presence of a real archival thinker. Uh, and uh, I remember he, he was there during the centennial observa observation of the PAC in 1972. And we were kind of floundering around putting together exhibits and then we put together a publication highlighting the, the, the holdings and the significance and the major portions of all media. And it was kind of floating around and there wasn't much coordination. Uh, people were contributing articles and, 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 uh, and items to be included in the publication. And uh, I think it was done through a cooperation with the University of Toronto Press, I think, at the time, rather than the Queen's Printer. And it was kind of floundering around and everybody was, and we would have meetings and uh, come out and there wasn't, wasn't making much progress. So Hugh decided as the branch director, he was responsible for all the media. Uh, we're all in the same branch and Hugh was the head of the branch. He decided, of course, that was publications and writing and things was his forte. So he just took over this project and bingo, it was done. And he edited all of our submissions and, uh, and, the, and the thing went ahead and it was out in time for the centennial observation, which is, was, I don't know, May or something, whatever the month was, the 72, due mainly to Hugh, because he was so good at bringing that stuff to it. For him, it was like correcting a whole lot of term papers and putting them all together and making sense out of them. And uh, so that was, he, he had a big influence on us as opposed to pure administrative side, which, which was left to others. The administration went on, but it wasn't Hughes' doings. And, uh, so
somebody talked to one time about bringing, uh, creating another division for another uh, uh, type of media. For example, photo and art and uh, documentary art and photography and the audiovisual area were all in the same division. By this time there were about six or seven divisions. And people in the audiovisual area wanted their own division because they didn't feel they had a lot in common with, with documentary art and photography, although they did. But anyway, the people in there wanted to create their own division. And he was said, oh no, not a, I don't think I could handle another division because I think it would have made eight and eight directors reporting directly to him and his own admin office, which was more than he could, was willing to put up with. Yeah. That's good. Thank you.